Hi, Ann Carrick again. Now I am with Joe Valenti from Valenti Vision Films. And Joe, nice to have you here with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great to have you at the uh, Film Industry Mixer. The big thing going on, I guess, with you right now is your movie project, the E8 Think Tank. Yes, correct. Yes. So, yeah, and I know I talked to you a little bit before we came in here. All sorts of good things happening with that. Um, not only was it a low budget with lots of great effects, which you're going to tell us about, right. but it's screening tomorrow here in Danbury, correct? Yeah, tomorrow, 7 o'clock at the Palace Theatre in Danbury. So make sure you go check that out. Um, so tell us, because you were saying that it's really unusual that it had such a low budget with all the things that were in it. Well, I think I, I've had a lot of practice in the past couple of years um, of taking low budgets and trying to make them, you know, stretching the dollar as far as we could stretch it. And uh, with this one, we roughly spent about $50,000 for the entire film, but it's a movie, an action movie, kind of a 24 style movie that's got uh, car explosions, shed explosions, helicopters, car chases. I mean, I think we totaled six cars throughout the film. A lot of stunts, a lot of gunfires, you know, so it's, it's a pretty exciting film and I think it just proves that you can do a lot with a little. So typically to have all those kind of things in a movie or in a film, what would the budget be? Because 50000 is low. Yeah, you're looking to probably like, you know, a million at least. So how'd you do it for 50? I mean, a lot What's of the favors. Secret? I, <laughs> you do it a lot of stuff, you know, you, you, you barter a lot of deals, you have great producers and, and people who go to bat for you and really, you know, know how to get a lot you know, by doing some favors, by, by making some deals or whatever. Um, I direct, shoot, and edit, so it keeps the cost there down. Right, so there you um, only have one person Yeah, it's of one person doing it, and it also makes the process go faster because you don't have to relay three messages. I know while I'm shooting on set what I'm going to need in the editing room. And right. once I get in the editing room, it just flies by. So the process has been quick, uh, less than four months from the time we started shooting to airing it now. Right. And, um, and it's also doing a lot of stunt work yourself, too. <laughs> I did a few stunts in the film. I mean, hanging off of the back of a car going 60, 70 miles an hour oh, to wow. get some chase scenes. Um, just roped with a harness. And uh, I did uh, some other stunts too, like dangling from. So that's a pipe. part of the secret is you're doing, se you're wearing several hats <laughs> yeah. instead and of just to. doing one thing. I mean, if you, if you think you're going to do like an indie film and try to do, you know, work with small budget and you're going to do one job. I, <laughs> not gonna happen. It's not gonna I be mean, a small you, budget. You really gotta, you know, you <laughs> gotta take on a lot of roles and stuff, and we're right. doing all of them. How long did it take from the time you had the idea, sort of, before you started to work on it, or it was completed? Well, we actually did a pilot version, a very, very low, low budget. Right. And when I'm talking low budget, we're talking like a thousand dollars, whatever. Wow. We shot on the DVX, did like a 40-minute pilot of the show, and that's sort of what we shopped around to say, hey, we want to do something a little bit bigger. And then that brought us a year later to doing this sort of, you know, an HD version with, you know, in our eyes, a lot more money than we were used to. Right. Um, and then we just had to figure out how we were going to get all these elements that we wanted to have in the film for that money. Right. Now, I know you said that it's really a, sort of a made-for-TV movie, but it's also been screened. Not only is it coming tomorrow here to Danbury, but it's already been shown in some other places in theaters. Yeah. I mean... We originally we had an idea for a TV series, and that's what we were originally starting with. And then we thought, well, why not just have it be a standalone film by itself that you could put on DVD, distribute overseas, you know, air on some TV stations, video right. on demand, all that stuff. And what we did was we left the series open ended so that it could continue if you know if if it came to to be. is going to be airing on NBC's brand new channel called oh. New York Nonstop. Okay. So it's a regional channel. They love the film. And June 20th, they're going to be airing at 9 o'clock. So the full two-hour movie. Right. And any news on that yet? Well, the actual movie that we have here. Wow. So we get like kind of a cool historic yes. little thing <laughs> that we can keep with us forever. And, um, and they've already gave us a green light that if we get sponsorship for the film, um, for the series, that they'll give us a 13 episode run Excellent. on the series too. So that's what we're kind so of So you're keeping your fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we believe. And where'd you get the idea for this particular well, storyline and project? Kevin Wenzel came up with the, uh, with the idea for the Think Tank series. And then uh, I jumped on as a co-writer and kind of just embellished the story a little bit. And um, so the, the two of us together, he created it. And then the two of us kind of molded the thing. And we also had a lot of help from 
the producers and you know Dale Johnson and, and our producers Blaze and Jerry um, and David our lead actor I mean everybody on the <laughs> set contributed to the script sometimes we were writing scenes as we were shooting them wow. because we realized stuff wasn't going to make sense yeah but again that's that's what you do on independent you make it work with what you know the time and money that you have absolutely you know before we run out of time I have to ask you about um, the amazing adventures of Little Batman, because uh, I cannot imagine working with a cast of all five-year-olds. I'm gonna tell you right now, and then if there are <laughs> actors out there watching this, okay, I thought working with five-year-olds was gonna be the most difficult thing in the world. I went and did a feature film right after The Amazing Adventures of Little Batman. Right. I was praying that I could go back and <laughs> to work the with the five-year-olds. They were the most amazing five-year-olds. I mean, no attitudes, no egos. I mean, everything. They're just so. But you didn't have like the five-year-old meltdowns because no, I've I mean, been in well, kindergarten we had, classes. We had, the, we had the parents that were wrangling the kids and oh, stuff and everything. So, but okay. you want to talk about amazing like fortitude that these children had? <laughs> I wish adult actors were you know uh, well, were as respectful as as these kids were yeah and five-year-olds follow directions pretty well as far as you tell them to do something they, they, do. they give mean, your best they, effort but you, know? you have these kids dressed up in these you know costumes i mean they just had a lot of fun doing it we had amazing sets and props i mean it was a you know it was it was quite a production and stuff yeah. but the only project i've ever done that had exceeded the expectations that i thought it was going to be was that one was that With the one. five-year-old i mean always you know you do a film and you're like wow i wish i could go back i would have done right, this right, differently right. i would have done that that came out far better than i thought could ever and you know it's just amazing and, and kids love it and the parents love it. it's just such a good feel-good movie okay last 30 seconds advice for people who are looking to get into the business or figure out where they belong just work shoot whatever you have to do if it's a you know a Fisher Price camera <laughs> just get out there and do something because really like you like I've noticed how you can just you know hone in on your skills and get better and better I look at stuff that I did from you know 10 years ago at the time was the greatest thing in the world and now I look back I'm like wow that wasn't so good okay I've gotten better as the years gone right. but you but can only, you can only get that if you keep working and you keep shooting so no matter what just keep doing something all right great advice thanks Joe we are thank you thanks so much you're welcome